Let me introduce my colleague and dear friend, Dr. Nicola Shamas, uh, Associate Professor of Medicine at the University of Iowa and Director of the Midwest Research Foundation. He has done a lot of work and pioneering work with JET ISR, and I don't think there's anyone better to introduce this topic to us. And Nick, take it away, please. Subhash, thank you very much, uh, you know, and thanks uh, for all the course director for a tremendous conference. Can't get my slides to go here for some reason. Okay, um, here we go. All right, uh, so why, when, and how? You know, we're going to try to answer that in maybe a little less than seven minutes if I can. Uh, again, if you look at, uh, this is not moving. Here we go. Conflict of interest, uh, it's right on that slide. Uh, again, Atherectomy is not for everybody. It's only for, and in my world, it's for complex lesions. You know, if, if you do it for short, non-occlusive disease, it's probably not going to be very cost-effective, and I can say that really up front. A drug-coated balloon has taken over that market. As far as I'm concerned, if you want to do atherectomy, you have to go into the hostile lesions. You're looking at severe calcium, instant restenosis, CTOs, task C and D lesion, long lesions, uh, and thrombus, uh, very likely to affect drug dilution, but the whole idea, like we have heard from all the other speakers, the atherectomy it will increase your procedural success. It's going to reduce flow-limiting dissections. It's going to reduce your bailout stenting. It's going to allow optimal stent expansion and may improve effectiveness of the antiproliferative drugs. So many atherectomy devices, and our focus is going to be on the jet stream device. This is the device. It's a rotational cutter with an aspiration capability. Uh, it works very well on organized thrombus, fibrotic, fatty, restenotic, or calcified tissue. It's also indicated as a thrombectomy device. It has a label. Uh, if you see the tip of it is a rotational differential front cutting tip, then you have a rotational differential cutting expandable tip right proximal to, uh, to, the, uh, to the very tip of it. And then you have an aspiration port proximal to all the cutting tips. Again, you have the console here that gives you the infusion and aspiration port. It gives you the runtime counter and the blade up, blade down uh, mode. So again, it comes in two different versions, the XC or the expendable cutter and the SC, which is a single cutter. The expendable cutter is a 2.1, 3.0. 2.1 means the blade down, 3.0 is the blade up. Uh, two different sizes, 2.1 and 2.4. And again, the majority of the time, we end up using the 2.4, 3.4 in FEMPOP lesions because vessel size typically is 5 millimeter or higher. The Jetstream SC is typically used for the tibial vessels uh, with the... Uh, Pretty much uh, vessel size has to be over two uh, millimeter, you know, when you, when you use these devices. Again, we have quite a bit of data now uh, being generated with the jet stream. Feasibility studies are two of them currently, the jet stream calcium and the jet stream ISR. The larger registries are the pathway PVT, the jet registry, the jet SCE, and ongoing is the jet ISR and that jet ranger that will be, started very, uh, that will be starting very soon. Uh, so we're looking at the jet stream calcium study, uh, the bottom line in severe and moderate calcified disease, short lesions. If you look at the minimal luminal area after jet stream, it increased from 4.3 millimeter square to 7.4 millimeter square. I think more important than anything else is the calcium reduction was responsible for 86% of the lumen increase you know, in this uh, study. And this is a typical example from the IVIS. You can see how the MLA increased very significantly and a good, nice debulking. So when we look at the JET registry, you know, the JET registry uh, uh, involved 241 patients. It's a multi-center, open-label, non-randomized registry, uh, mostly claudicant, de novo or restenotic, but non-stent restenotic disease. Lesion length had to be over 4 centimeter. You had to have at least one good patent runoff vessel. Primary endpoint was binary restenosis at 12 months, and this was in 37 sites in the U.S. And what we need to note here, the lesion length is on average was 16.4 centimeter, and the total occlusion were 36%, a real-world registry. So if you look at this registry, your procedural success was 98.3%. Uh, which is achieving less than 30% residual diameter post-procedure. Uh, it took a little over an hour to do the procedure, and just notably only 4.7 minutes total jet stream time, which seemed to be divided equally between the blade down and the blade up mode. And if you look at the, uh, and this is uh, notably without drug-coated balloon. This was done without drug-coated balloon. You know, you can see the restenosis rate was 22.8% at one year, and the freedom from TLR was 81.7%. 
So again, uh, the, jet stream, uh, the JET registry conclusion is in long fem pop lesion. This works really very well, high procedural success, uh, low TLR, TVR, even without drug-coated venone. Uh, again, in this registry, we had about 30% stenting rate, but again, no pre-specified bailout stenting criteria were in this registry. Uh, if we look at uh, our own registry, the JET SCE registry, uh, out of uh, single center, single operator, 234 jet stream cases were performed, 81 were at index, 154 jet stream were on follow up. And if you look at this registry, and, and uh, the diabetics were over half the patients, uh, CTO was in 25.9%, severe and moderate calcium you know, was almost 79%, and adjunctive standing was 27%. In the de novo subset, the freedom from TLR of patients who got the jet stream plus a drug-coated banone was 91.1% at one year versus the jet stream without a drug-coated banone, it was 69.2%. So we strongly believe that if you're going to do any type of atherectomy, including jet stream, you really need to add drug-coated banone if you want to get good long-term results. Uh, when you look at the instant restenosis, uh, and uh, as a disclaimer, the, the jet stream is not a uh, on label, you know, for uh, for instant restenosis. We have used it in our lab, of course, off label. The early data came from the uh, animal models, uh, you know, in a porcine overstretch injury model, where the jet stream clearly has shown a very effective debulking of restenotic tissue, uh, as demonstrated by quantitative vascular as well as intra intravascular ultrasound in geography. So, if you look at the jet stream feasibility. Study, Study, and that is really uh, uh, the, the key uh, study in, in the uh, ISR world uh, that I think is going to be paving the way for the bigger study that we're currently conducting, the JET ISR. You can see 32 limbs, 29 patients. We looked at the most important thing is interaction between the device and the stent. And that was done by Core Lab, uh, you know, Dr. Papma's lab at the Brigham's did that for us. Uh, we looked at safety endpoint as well as the TLR at six months. And you can see that the patients enrolled in and this were really real-world patients, 41% diabetic, over 30% were limb ischemia, lesion length was 19.5 centimeters, 62.5% were task C and D lesions, and over 30 centimeter lesions in one out of four lesions. And if you look at the residual stenosis, uh, post-adjunctive treatment was 100% success rate. If you look at the bailout uh, stenting was 6.3%, and most importantly, the new stent fracture deformities were 0% by core lab adjudication. Uh, very classic example to what you expect. This is your baseline ISR post jet stream post angioplasty. Anyway, what we've seen, freedom from TLR at six months, it looked really good at 86.2%, but very similar to what we have seen with the laser. There was a decline between the six month and one year down to 58.6%. So this is, a, again, another uh, important point that, yes, we may achieve very good acute results, but for the long term, drug-coated venom may be the answer. And if you compare that in long lesions, and this is from Excite all the way to Lutonic, these are all long lesions. You know, the, the ISR at one year uh, with the uh, Excite was 50% freedom from TLR, 58.6% with the jet stream ISR. But again, you can see we're lagging behind the coded stents, uh, the, the um, uh, Viabon uh, uh, code, um, uh, graft stent as, and the drug coded balloon. Uh, that's compared to the short lesions on that right side of the graph. A distal embolization from 0 to 9.4% that we have seen in different studies. I think the most important thing is the use of the filters. With the NAF6 filter, the distal embolization was 1.8%, and no filters was about 8%, but it varied very drastically, you know, with different studies. But again, it's like every atherectomy device. It does uh, continue to embolize, and, uh, and it's really important to um, look into uh, filter uh, uh, as an important um, uh, adjunctive uh, treatment. Uh, wires and embolic filter protection, make sure you position your wire distal in a tibial or peroneal that stabilize the running of your jet stream. Uh, we use the, these are the three wires that we think are the most compatible with the jet stream device, the Spartacore, uh, the long bare wire if you use the NAF6, and the throughway wire from Boston. The filters that we commonly use is the NAF6. If you want to use a spider, make sure you use a rotaglide to avoid the uh, device getting stuck on the wire of the spider. Uh, and currently, we're testing the Wirion filter in a lot of our jet stream, uh, and this is uh, from Guardia. Uh, we always use blade down mode first, two blade down, mode, uh, uh, blade down uh, modes run first, and then two blade up. Uh, we very slow advancing of the device uh, to uh, minimize distal embolization, and always make sure your aspiration port is active. 
The two other trials come in, uh, is the JET-ISR trial, which is currently ongoing. In fact, we have 18 patients already enrolled in that study. This is in 140 subjects in 14 sites. You know, this is trying to duplicate the finding of the JET-STREAM ISR. Looking at TLR, we have uh, the core lab of actually Dr. Banerjee's uh, at the VA in Dallas, you know, looking at duplex ultrasound and angiographic core lab for us, uh, and of course, safety endpoints. Uh, we also have the Jet Ranger study, which I think we, we, we believe this is going to be a pivotal study. Uh, it's a prospective, randomized study, 250 patients in 25 sites in the U.S., randomized 2 to 1, Jet Stream atherectomy plus the Ranger drug coated balloon versus the Ranger only. We have three core labs in this uh, study, including an angiographic core lab, uh, an IVIS subset core lab, and a duplex ultrasound core lab, looking at not just DLR, but of course looking at patency and other things and it's going to extend beyond one year. In fact, we just extended that to two years and three years, so we would have a three-year follow-up uh, in this study. In conclusion, we believe that gestream atherectomy in long fem pop lesions uh, will provide excellent safety uh, profile, high procedural success, uh, very low 12-month restenosis rate without drug-coated balloon, uh, low TLR and TVR rate, uh, uh, mostly a, a very strong device to remove calcium. Uh, adding drug-coated balloon to the jet stream device is given us TLR rate in the single digit at this point. Uh, it's, of course, it's an off-label one for FEMPOP ISR, but we know it's effective. Uh, we tend to use embolic filter protection, and we tend to use rotaglide. The technique is very critical, and Jet ISR and Jet Tracer hopefully will provide us with more definitive data on the jet stream role in the instant restenosis as, and as an adjunctive treatment with drug-coated balloon in complex uh, FEMPOP disease. Thank you very much.